In this next module, I'm going to talk about conflicts of interest and the importance of disclosing conflicts of interest. So what is a conflict of interest? It's basically what it sounds like. It's any financial or personal relationship that might influence, that might bias an author, a reviewer, or an editor's judgments. Uh, and that's basically how the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors defines it. Uh, conflicts of interest, um, it's recommended by this committee that they should always be disclosed and most biomedical journals in fact require this. I'm not sure how, uh, how much is required in other scientific disciplines. Obviously in the biomedical field there's a lot of issues because of drug companies and medical device companies. Conflicts of interest can influence whether or not an editor or reviewer decides to reject or accept a paper. That's valid because obviously if something was uh, sponsored by a company and it seems to have a slant uh, on the data, that might be a reason not to accept the paper. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of the journals will actually print for each author what their reported conflicts of interest were, uh, even if they're none. So you'll see that in a lot of published papers that a lot of times those things are made available to the reader as probably they should be because they may help the reader to uh, make a judgment on the paper. Um, conflicts of interest, it's, it's, it's a hard topic because uh, it's unclear uh, exactly what is going to actually uh, bias someone. Um, in general, journals will try to err on the side of asking for all possible conflicts of interest so that um, even something which maybe the scientist doesn't think is going to sway them, uh, maybe is uh, swaying them, biasing them subconsciously, that that be disclosed. So uh, it's, a, it's an area of controversy. Some people will argue that uh, we're being overly vigilant on conflicts of interest and that uh, sometimes there's a bias against things that are industry sponsored that really shouldn't be there. That is just because something was paid for by a drug company, it doesn't mean that it's biased. And so, so people have worried about that. Um, also, people have argued that, you know, that there are inherent conflicts of interest that don't have anything to do with, uh, that you really can't pinpoint. Like, um, all authors have a conflict of interest in the sense of they want to get their work published. They have a conflict to want to make the data sound exciting and they want, you know, so, so there are some conflicts of interest that we really can't even, there's no way to write them down on a piece of paper. But to the extent possible, the more that's disclosed, the, the idea is that uh, the more transparent you are, the better able we're able to kind of gauge how much bias might exist in a paper. I'm just going to give you one case study on this that I think is sort of illustrative. So um, there was a paper on CT screening for lung cancer. So uh, lung cancer is a particularly deadly cancer because many lung cancers are caught late. So there uh, are a number of groups who are trying to come up with screening tests for lung cancer that could identify lung cancer in its very early stages when it's much more curable. So one of those potential modalities is the CT scan. This is uh, an imaging um, process which could identify early cancers. So uh, it's controversial though because some people believe that what you're identifying in most of the cases when you're identifying some very early cancers are cancers that actually would not have gone on, that they're very slow growing, they probably would not have gone on to kill the person or even to affect their lives. So you may end up being doing some over screening and over treating. So there's a lot of controversy about um, this technique. But a paper came out in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2006, which seemed to show it at first pass that CT scanning indeed uh, was effective. So researchers screened more than 30,000 smokers and other people who were at high risk of lung cancer annually with CT scans to try to identify early stage lung cancers. And they did indeed, out of those uh, more than 30,000 uh, people, they identified 484 lung cancers. Most of them were in stage one, and that's very atypical. So usually for lung cancer, you're identifying things that are uh, later stage. It turned out that indeed these patients were treated and they had very high survival rates in the 88% to 90% range, which is much higher than, um, you know, if you just look at survival from lung cancer in general. So they concluded from that uh, that this that CT screening was effective and they concluded in a population at risk for lung cancer such screening could prevent some 80% of deaths from lung cancer which was really an over extrapolation from the data they had. Uh, that paper came out there were a number of problems with the paper so for example it didn't have a control group it's very hard to know if we were identifying cancers that were simply uh, things that again 
wouldn't have gone on to do anything that really um, were unimportant lesions that, yes, they were cancerous, but wouldn't have gone on to kill the person because they were so slow growing. So it, it's unclear whether or not any lives were really saved by these early identifications. And as soon as that paper came out, because it is a topic of, uh, of high interest and high controversy, um, that study was highly criticized for a number of methodological flaws and, and unwarranted conclusions, and, and those criticisms were probably quite apt. Uh, there was probably 10 or 11 letters to the editor uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine over this one. It was widely covered in the media. So uh, there were a number of problems with that study. Uh, the reason it's relevant for our discussion here is that it turned out uh, what was uncovered a little bit later is that there was a major conflict of interest that was not uh, disclosed properly um, that had to do with this study. So uh, one of the study's uh, funding sources, which they did disclose in the original article, was uh, one of the funding sources was this Foundation for Lung Cancer Early Detection, Prevention, and Treatment. And it sounds like a very innocuous, uh, nonprofit foundation, right? And it donated uh, $3.6 million. That wasn't in the original article, but that came out later. So it was a substantial amount of money from this foundation. That, that foundation was disclosed in the original paper. So maybe the authors thought, well, we've disclosed that, and that's all you need to do. However, the editors at the New England Journal of Medicine later learned some more details about this particular foundation. So it turns out that this foundation for lung cancer early detection, prevention, and tr treatment was run by the principal investigator of the 2006 study, the, the, the main author of that study. Uh, that foundation was housed at her institution, and it was funded almost solely by the Vector Group, which is the parent company of a major tobacco company. So there was this hidden tie to a uh, tobacco company, and the first author, the principal investigator on that paper, had a very strong, uh, important tie to this tobacco company. And it doesn't take too much thinking uh, to figure out that the tobacco company has a vested interest in being able to show that CT screening is effective for detecting early lung cancer because if we had a good screening uh, tool for detecting early lung cancer, that would probably encourage a lot of people to keep smoking because they say, well, you know, I can't quit, so I'm just going to go get screened a lot and catch the cancer early. And um, so, so there was a, you know, a, a real conflict of interest here that should have been disclosed. Uh, in a uh, 2008 editorial, the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, Medicine editors write, we and our readers were surprised to learn that the source of the funding of the charitable foundation was in fact a large corporation that could have an interest in the study results. So um, clearly uh, we don't know whether or not for sure uh, the tie to this tobacco company and the money from the tobacco company influenced how this person wrote up the paper, but clearly um, with having so much funding from the tobacco company, you, you, it does make you wonder if some of the reason that the, the, the paper turned out so flawed and to have so many problems is, is potentially because of this conflict of interest. So the importance of disclosing uh, conflicts of interest I is really clear and uh, you need to be as transparent as possible. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University please visit us at med.stanford.edu.